What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel Critical Overload here. So we're going to talk about a few different horror topics in this video here today. We'll be talking about Saw X, we'll be talking about Scream 7, we'll be talking about Chucky Season 3, and we'll be talking about The Exorcist Believer. Now I do want to kick this off with Saw X. Saw X we just learned in the recent featurette that came out that it's taking place a few weeks after Saw and that it's being considered Saw 2. This was again disclosed by one of the producers during the latest featurette that came out yesterday. A very cool featurette if for any of you Saw fans like myself out there who want to check it out it's up on youtube i'll actually leave it down in the description of this video so we've known it will be a mid cool mid cool i guess that's what they're referring to it as set between one and two but now we have a better understanding of how long after the first movie is taking place obviously it's not quite literally saw two but fans of the series get the message the embargo for the ex or the embargo for not the exorcist <laughs> for saw lifts wednesday as well wednesday night next week at 11 p.m eastern i believe i'll be seeing it thursday and i'll have a review up that night if i'm able to do so so far other than what is already out there in the present and what i was rep was bringing to you guys before everything even got going with filming i don't know anything about saw x going into it other than that it apparently has a great opening it uses mark hoffman in an effective way and it seems to be very emotional i'm in the dark here just as much as you guys are are you excited for Saw X? Why or why not? Let me know down below. Also, go get your tickets as well if you haven't already. And again, I'll leave a link to the featurette in the description of my video if you want to check that out. Diving into Scream 7. So Beyond the Mask recently put out a video about Patrick Dempsey possibly returning in Scream 7. And for those that have already asked me if I could confirm or deny if that's true, I cannot confirm that it, that it's true. But I did hear a few casting rumors over the last two weeks and Patrick Dempsey was included in those casting rumors. I will also say this. A lot of people were already asking me if I had heard something about Patrick Dempsey. I've been saying no because it's one of those things where I'm just waiting to have everything come together and then I will talk about it when I'm ready to talk about it. Just like with the Christopher Landon scenario. Uh, again, I haven't made a video to discuss what what I've actually heard involving Patrick Dempsey because, again, it's just one of those things. I want more context. And then once everything becomes more clear to the point that I think it's worth discussing further, then I'll make a video. Obviously, having Mark and Sydney back is the ideal return for most fans of this couple, I think, especially since they've had a lot of off screen development ever since Scream 3. I mean, they're get, they're they're getting married. They're banging. They're having kids seem to be very much so in love but we don't have any of that on screen yet so we would love to see some of that on screen not that it's necessary but seeing them as a package deal is the preferred thing uh nev has seemed a lot more giddy about scream 7 as we've known from her interviews and just these comments she's making as opposed to scream 6 where she had no problem saying nah i'm not doing it so prior to the strikes she was still telling people i don't know if i can talk about that so something is likely coming with a massive announcement about nev campbell returning included apparently and i will say take this with a grain of salt apparently she signed on before the strikes allegedly too but i was initially told that wasn't the case and that she actually was just negotiating but then managed to ink a deal prior to the strikes um but we'll just have to see which one of those ends up being true because we at least know the negotiation part were true but did she actually sign before the strikes or not it's just a matter of time that we'll find this out because the strikes of course now according to the news seems to be coming to a close at least with the wga and if the wga strike is coming to a close soon then the actors won't be too far behind them now diving into chucky season three chucky season three will have a first look tonight on sci-fi and i have no idea what that will include but hopefully it's enough to hold you guys over also officially i did tell you this before i started season three last week chucky season three part two is officially slated to arrive in 2024 sometime however here's the thing that i was considering why would you wait until next fall why not just finish filming the damn season and schedule something to debut in the spring of next year if these strikes are about to be resolved the way the news is currently hyping just shoot the last four episodes debut them before next fall i do think that this actually might be the last season not gonna lie but chances are if it is it's gonna return to the big screen or the direct video format i would i would honestly prefer the big screen return that's just me i'd love to see the traditional chucky on the big screen maybe with a little bit more serious tone 
and have that comedy that he's known for have the campiness that we all love about the series woven into the fabric as it has been for quite some time but just tiptoe back into the darker sides of the earlier parts of the franchise um i think they did a great job doing that in season one obviously the campiness was a little bit more apparent in season two but it didn't reach again the absurdity level for me that i think we've gotten in season three and you'll see what i mean when you find out what chucky's motive is um i do think that part two of season three will feature even more cameos because of events in part one and it's probably going to just build to chaos at the white house that probably gets televised in front of the world or something else far more ridiculous and fun but i digress jumping into the exorcist believer okay please click away if you do not want things from TV spots and trailers and featurettes turned into logic or quote unquote spoilers, your viewing experience is your responsibility and I can only do so much to protect your neck. But this latest featurette that came out yesterday clearly is making it apparent how Chris will end up in the hospital. David Gordon Green literally goes over the thing folks were trashing during the test screening. Chris will have her first confrontation in 50 years and guess how it goes. She has her first confrontation with a demon in 50 years and guess how it goes. The trailer and the TV spots, they've already shown you how it goes. She's going to lose her eyes. Victor is present in one of these trailers. We see them catching her or something when she when she falls. It's very it's like a very quick flash. You have to really pause and break down the trailer to see this stuff. And then the TV spots that have been coming out, one shows her resting in a hospital with bandages on her eyes. Again, her losing her eyes isn't the problem. It's the way that her character is already coming off like a fool. And they've already said her, themselves she's never done an exorcism, but they keep hyping her up as an expert. But here's the thing. If you've become such an expert of sorts, what expert who knows where their expertise actually starts and ends who as an expert is going to then confront a demon knowing they've never done an exorcism and knowing that that could be quite dangerous that doesn't seem like something an expert will do you can blame her old age you can blame as much as you want to <laughs> again you guys decided to bring chris in so it's going to be criticized this is not a successful use of the character some people already don't have have it are already having a hard time believing that she would even do something like this given where she was in the first movie yes people can change over time but if they don't even address where she was career-wise in the first movie obviously it's going to be uh, uh, it's going to be hard for some people to just believe that she just did this and abandoned everything about herself in the first movie why did you turn this into a book because obviously there's going to be some sort of rift between her and her daughter because of this book but you guys can let me know let me know what you think about this down in the comment section below. If you have already, of course, make sure you subscribe. Turn on post notifications in this video. In the description, I have links to my social media accounts. I am on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can message me there, of course. Let me see any movies, news, or reviews you'd like me to cover in the future. And with all that in mind, guys, I will see you in the next video.